And when I was the director of the Hurricane Center, the average number of storms was 10. <coughs> then we turned around and warmed up until 1998. And we were introduced into this new warming period by 19 storms in 1995. Now, the point that I'm trying to make to you is that we're in an active hurricane period. We would expect to have more storms during this period of time, and we have. But another important factor is we have a new observing tool that took place during this active period. That would be satellites that came into their own in about 1970. <clears throat> and the impact of satellites in the Atlantic on tropical storms can be seen in 2005. Now I've drawn a vertical line, black line down through the Western Atlantic. That would be the Eastern extent of reconnaissance planes. So we didn't have reconnaissance planes that could go on in to the Eastern Atlantic. We had seven storms form in the Eastern Atlantic in 2005 and never moved into the Western Atlantic. How do we know that they were there? It was because of satellites. <clears throat> how about 1933 when we had 21 named storms? How many storms were recorded? in the eastern Atlantic, zero. Now you can't tell me that we had an active hurricane season and nothing occurred in the eastern Atlantic. That raises an interesting question. What is the impact of satellite pictures on hurricane activity, particularly in the eastern Atlantic? So I went back and looked at 50 years before satellite and 50 years after satellite. The top line shows the 50 years before satellites. And between tropical storms and hurricanes, we were naming about one storm every two years. Now, I want you to notice that most of those were hurricanes. Not many tropical storms were recorded over in the eastern Atlantic. Now, let's go to the bottom of the curve, and you can see in the last 50 years that we're up to two to three storms a year. And that's just because we have satellites. So, between the fact that we were in an active period and we have a new observing tool, we're adding three to five storms a year over the quiet period in the 80s and the 90s. That doesn't add up to 30 storms in 2020. So the most important information that I have for you today is related to the real reason why I believe that we had a lot more storms. Because there's been a change in the philosophy of what we name. And that has really occurred in the last few years. In order to justify this statement, I need to talk a little bit about hurricane forms. One of the requirements for a hurricane is you have a pre-existing weather disturbance. Now, I want to divide the Atlantic into the tropical Atlantic south of 25 and the subtropical Atlantic north of 25. Now, in the tropical Atlantic, no question, but what is African disturbances that are very important. This is an example of Hurricane um, in 2008 that came on into the Gulf of Mexico. We follow 40 to 50 of these African disturbances every year. And in an active period, those disturbances account for something in the order of 10 to 12 a storm to year. And the energy process with these storms is very simple. It's thunderstorms. The disturbance caused thunderstorms, and if there's enough thunderstorms there, they heat the atmosphere, the hot air rises, and air goes spinning in at the surface, and if it reaches a threshold value, we put a name on it. Now, the types of development that take place in the northern Atlantic or in the subtropical Atlantic is entirely different. It occurs in the spring and primarily in the fall when a cold front moves off the coast and then stalls as this one did in 2001 in Tropical Storm Barry. Then a little weather disturbance develops along that front. Now, the main energy source here is baroclinic. Now, some of you may not be familiar with that term, but baroclinic means you have cold air side by side warm air, and any time you have that, the cold air tries to underride the warm air, and you get wind. So the initial energy process for this kind of a disturbance is baroclinic, but it is a, a, um, a good tropical storm when you have a lot of warm, moist air, and it causes thunderstorms, and at times, if there's enough, enough thunderstorms, these systems can morph on into a tropical storm, and the center part of them becomes a warm core. 
As a matter of fact, that is a legitimate reason why some of the hurricanes do form. <clears throat> but it creates a problem if you start putting names on them. <clears throat> Let's assume now that the main weather disturbance that I want to talk about develops off the coast of the Carolinas. It's a baroclinic disturbance, but it causes thunderstorms. And for the next 24, 36 hours, 48 hours, the thunderstorms really become active, and this system begins to turn over into a tropical storm. So we put a name on it. Now, as this system moves on north, it encounters colder water, the thunderstorms dissipate, and it taps into a new source of cold air, and it reverts back to a baroclinic system that goes charging in into the North Atlantic. Well, what do you do? You put a name on it. Do you take a name off from it? Well, in 2020, they decided that that's what they would do, and that's what they've been doing in recent years. Now, the green would represent tropical storms, and the red would re represent hurricanes. Look there in the North Atlantic how many short green lines you see. They put a name on it, and then in less than two days, they took a name off from it as it went on into the North Atlantic. Matter of fact, we named eight of those storms. I'm going to call them baroclinic, baroclinic storms in contrast to the ones that are uh, the main energy source is thunderstorms. So we, have eight, we had 10 of those. I mean, we named a storm just before it crossed the coast of Portugal. I mean, we named everything that moved in the North Atlantic in 2020. <clears throat> that raises an interesting question. What happened before we had satellites and what happened after satellites? So I went back to a 25 year period before we had satellites <clears throat> and we named about one maybe, or less than one per year. Then we got satellites in 1970, and we began to see with the satellites the thunderstorms that developed out of, around these disturbances. So we started naming some of those, one to two a year. Then beginning in 1995, for the next 25 years, we upped that to four a year, and then in 2017, the last five years, it's averaging seven storms a year, and we named 34 storms, baroclinic storms, over the last five years in the North Atlantic. How does that compare to before we had satellites? Let's go back, and it doesn't make any difference which five-year period you choose. I chose one of 1961 to 1965. We had four storms. The other observation I'll make is the storms when we named them before we had satellites generally were hurricanes. 75% of them were hurricanes. In other words, they were pretty strong storms. That raised an interesting question. How many storms did we have in the North Atlantic in 1933? Zero. So I have a question to ask. Was um, the 2020 hurricane season uh, really that much more active than 1933? So I thought it would be interesting to impose the same observing restrictions on 2020 that we had in 1933. There would be no satellites. There would be no uh, reconnaissance. And I identified 13 storms that probably wouldn't have been named. Now, maybe the one with the hurricane would have been named. So that leaves 12 that could not have been named. Well, just maybe if we take 10 storms off of the record in 2020, then 1933 was still maybe one of the more active periods. And we're doing the same thing in this year. We've named 20 storms so far, and 11 of those have been with the Bear Clinic. One of those storms, two of those storms had a lifetime of 12 hours, one had a lifetime of 18 hours, and two of them had a lifetime of 24 hours. So the same restrictions, and we have 11 storms that might not have been in the record in the 1930s. So, the 1933 could have well be yet the most active hurricane period in the history of the North Atlantic. And James, you've already shown this. What about the reality of hurricane activity? Let's go worldwide. The bottom graph shows the number of hurricanes, typhoons. Worldwide, there's about 50 of these. And there's been a 5 to 10% decrease as we uh, moved into uh, the currently. Well, what about the Atlantic? Is there any indication 
of the trend in hurricane activity in the Atlantic. I submit to you that there's only one way that we can judge that. And that would be looking at the landfalling storm. That would be the three, cat, uh, the three, four, fives in the lower 48. I concede to you that in the late 1800s, a tropical storm or category one in a remote area might not be in the record books. But I think that any storm that had uh, winds of 110 miles an hour or more is in the record book. This shows the number of major hurricanes that made landfall in the United States by decade. Over on the left hand side, see that little increase there? That is the active period in the late 18s. And then in the middle, you see the, uh, the period in uh, the 40s and the 50s. So there has been a decrease in hurricane activity in the Atlantic and certainly a major decrease from uh, the 40s and the 50s. I have one other point that I'd like to make. So what is the summary on that? Well, maybe, just maybe, the 2020 hurricane season wasn't more active than 1933. But more important is you cannot use the raw hurricane data to do research. As these very learned people did in 2005. Notice they took a weak period, the 70s and the 80s, and compared it to the strong period in the 90s and on into the early part of this century and conclude this, the significant increase was a consistent with global warming. No, absolutely not no. You cannot use the raw hurricane data to do research. Appreciate the opportunity to share.